Hey y'all, today I'm sitting down to make a sequencer in Reactor. I had a couple requests to do something like this. I will say I don't usually do a whole ton of sequencing in Reactor. Generally, I send MIDI information to Reactor from Pure Data, from Max MSP, and from other places. And the reason for that is generally I feel, uh, at least in my case, I can do more sophisticated transformations of things. That said, being able to throw together a sequencer in Reactor is not a bad skill, and I think we're going to end up with something that sounds really quite nice. Quickly, I will say I was practicing this, I wanted to make this a super quick video, but then as I practiced, I realized, oh, I could also show this, I could also show this. So if the flow of this goes the way I'm expecting, uh, I might actually split this into two videos. So uh, you will know that by the time of watching it, if it says part one in this video, then you'll know the answer to that. But anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna create something new, and let's start, delete our inputs, by just making our usual sawtooth wave. Let's just do this the usual way. Note pitch, gate. And we're gonna change a lot of this because this is how we make our sawtooth controlled by the keyboard. But of course, we don't want it controlled by the keyboard. We want it controlled by the sequencer. Prove that it works. Okay. One thing that I wanna do today that's kind of tangential to sequencing is I want to make a low pass gate. So I'm going to make a macro and I'm going to call it LPG. Now this comes back to in the old days where the main synths were Moogs and Buklas, again, uh, East Coast and West Coast. I don't really like those terms, but I'll throw them out there. These were an alternative to VCAs, voltage controlled amplifiers. So instead of a envelope that controls the amplitude used a low pass gate, which is actually a low pass filter. Usually an analog is done with Vactrols, but just as an alternative to the way we have been doing our envelopes, let's do this. Let's go inside. What I wanna put in here is an input and an output, and let's put in one more input and let's call this input our gate, right? So this is gonna be a kind of envelope filter that's triggered, but we're gonna make it in a slightly different way. Let's put in our ladder filter, meh. If I were being real serious, I would only use a one pole filter, but let's use the two pole filter for here. In is gonna to go to our in, and then our gate, let's have our gate trigger an AR envelope. Bink, let's give ourselves some controls for that. And so what this is going to do is this is replacing our VCA, our voltage controlled amplifier. And so we want it to start so low we're not getting any sound, right? And then we want it to go high enough that it opens all the way up to let all the sound through. And this is going to control the P. Now, usually a low pass gate would not have a resonance control, but uh, why wouldn't we just put that in there? Okay, so we need to take this envelope that goes from zero to one, and let's multiply it. Let's multiply it by, let's do a control, create a control, and we'll we'll get back to that in a second. We will call this depth moment. And then I'm gonna do a subtract. Well, here, let me actually, before I do the subtract, let me show you what we're doing, A to E, because we need to convert this, supposedly audio signal from the envelope, go in there. Let's clean this up. Release, attack, depth, and then resonance. Go back, lock that down. So our sawtooth is gonna go into the low pass gate and then that output is gonna go out. The low pass gate is gonna be triggered by our gate here. Once again, this is all completely tangential to our sequencer, but why wouldn't we do a couple things at the same time? All right, I'm gonna hit a key. There's not a lot going on. Let's create a constant. So the sawtooth is always going. If you listen very carefully, you can hear that going on. Uh, let's go to our depth here though. And let's make its minimum zero and its maximum 127. Okay. All right, so now we've got this filter that opens and closes. It's got a few problems though. One is that I still hear a sound ever so slightly when I'm not hitting a key. 
And then this depth 127 actually isn't 20,000 hertz. I think it's like 12,000 hertz. I'll look it up and I'll throw something up on the screen. And so it's not really going to the top of the range. So we need to make a couple little changes in here. One thing would be we could make that low pass even steeper, but um, let's instead, again, we think that MIDI notes should only go 0 to 127, but we can cheat a little bit. Let's do a subtract. And so let's have it go even lower than 0. So once again, once this envelope is 0, it doesn't matter what it's multiplied by, this is going to be a 0. And then let's subtract, I don't know, I'm kind of picking numbers out of the blue here, but let's do 20. And do that. Ah, now I don't hear anything anymore. Hitting the keys still does stuff, but I feel like that depth should go higher. Let's try 200. That's not a bad sound. Shorter attack. Longer release. We could try to do a more traditional sound. Oh, but with the low pass one, there's more audio leaking even after I subtract 20. What if I subtract 40 here? Still hear it. 60. Still hear it. 80. Almost gone. 100. I'm getting keys stuck on here for some reason. I'm not sure why. I think I hear that still a little bit. We'll do 120. Let's go back to our depth knob. Set our range even higher to 80. I can make that depth smaller, but it just means I don't hear anything. 320. If I crank up some resonance here, sounds more like our envelope filter, by the way. It's, it's clipping now because we have this all the way at one. And again, when we do resonance, we're boosting frequencies, so. Good gracious, I keep getting keys stuck on. By the way, notice when I get the key stuck on, I'm toggling this. It doesn't seem to like it when I've typed a number in and then I start immediately playing keys. I might click on the background once to avoid that. So really, this low-pass gate, again, when we're talking about the electronic object, it's a one-pole filter, again, so not so steep. But when it doesn't receive the trigger, it's completely closed, and so no frequencies are getting through. And then it has a sort of quick response to go up. And again, you know, you can give it an envelope like this, too. By the way, also notice in contrast with the envelope filter that we built before, it doesn't care what key you're pressing. It always is going to sweep up from negative 120 to 200, right? Zero times whatever times the depth is always going to be zero. Minus 120 is going to be negative 120, so that's a very, very low filter. A to E goes to the pitch. When it's one, when it's all the way open, it's reached its maximum. It's 1 times the depth, which is 320 in this case. 320 minus 120 is going to be 200, so that sweeps up to a frequency that's hopefully around 20,000 hertz. Once again, I'll throw up a conversion. I don't really feel like looking it up at the moment. All this in service of this is not our sequencer. Let's make our sequencer now, though. 